Today on Under the Big Tree, the Frequency Central DIY Eurorack Power Supply. When I first really got into Eurorack, uh, there was quite a bit of sticker shock there. I was really surprised at how expensive the cases and the power supplies were, and it seemed like that would be a major impediment for a lot of people to be able to get into the hobby at all. Now I've done a ton of learning about it, and what I've realized is that voltage is voltage. There's nothing magical about it at all. You just want a nice, clean DC plus 12 volts, minus 12 volts, and plus 5 volts to be able to run your Eurorack circuitry. The reason that you need plus and minus 12 volts is because of the op amps that are inside so many analog circuits. They need bipolar voltage to be able to function properly. Beyond that, some digital modules make use of a plus 5 volt signal on the power strip as well, although many digital modules just do onboard voltage regulation, taking the plus 12 volt signal input and turning it into 5 volts for computer use. So I wanted a small power supply so that I could have a portable system to be able to go out and test and debug Eurorack stuff without needing to have an entire case with me. After doing a little bit of searching around, trying to build something myself, I realized that there was a perfect solution already out there. The Frequency Central Eurorack Power Supply. This PCB costs all of a whopping $20. Most of the rest of the materials I already had within my kit. The rest of it I bought cheaply and easily at a local electronics store. And now I have everything that I need to be able to build a nice, simple power supply to allow me to test one or two modules at a time. In fact, this unit actually puts out 500 milliamps of both plus and minus 12 volt current, meaning that it is strong enough and powerful enough to be able to power a skiff. Depending upon their current requirements, you could easily power between, say, three and a dozen modules on this simple thing alone. So let's go over the materials that we have here and then we'll put it together and check it out. The PCB is well built, very easy to get. It was made by Frequency Central in the UK. I think I purchased it from synthcube.com. We've got these big power supply filter capacitors. These are 4700 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic caps. We've got six of those which will be able to smooth out the alternating current into nice smooth DC for us. These are the voltage regulators down here that allow us to be able to have plus 12, minus 12, and 5 volts and 5 volts of current. Very simple, very inexpensive, easily purchased. We've got a few more small electrolytic capacitors over here, some bypass caps, little 100 nanofarad caps, and then four quarter watt 1K resistors, a half a dozen diodes, model 4004, and some confirmation LEDs to let you know that each channel is functioning properly. The unit is powered from a 12 volt AC wall, wall ward adapter. Now remember, that's very important. There are lots of common 12 volt DC adapters. That's not what we want here. We want an adapter that takes in 120 volt AC and turns it into 12 volt AC, alternating current. I found this one on eBay for about five bucks. To connect it up, rather than getting fancy, I just purchased a simple cable that's got a female end and a couple of solder jacks to be able to get it right there. Easy breezy. Here are a couple of heat sinks for the voltage regulators to make sure they don't get too hot and some thermal paste to be able to make sure that the heat sinks and the voltage regulators are touching as well as possible. And finally, the power supply terminates in the standard 16 pin pinout that you use to connect all Eurorack materials together. So with that, I'm just going to put this together off camera and let's take a look at it when it's all done. So this is what happens when you rush. This was such an easy build that I thought it would be no problem at all. I went through, put everything in, checked for cold solder joints, etc, etc. Everything was fine. Turned it on and no power. Why? Because I put both of the voltage regulators in backwards. <laughs> I was able to find out by touching the heatsink and having it almost burn my finger off. So 
always check twice and cut once. All right, the moment of truth has arrived. Will it work? Well, of course it will because I already tested it, but no, 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 no. Will it work? That's the big question. So here it is. Um, pieces all didn't fit that perfectly together, but we're not trying to win an aesthetics beauty contest here. We're just trying to get something that will generate power for Euro rack. So we got everything in. Uh, and <laughs> if you're building this, do make sure that you put the voltage regulators in correctly the first time. That, uh, yeah. So let's start by figuring out if it actually works or not. Dun da 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 da. <gasps> LEDs. What could it mean? Well, it could mean that we should go and test the voltages and see what they are. Fortunately, we have pads right there to allow us to be able to do that. So we will start by testing negative 12. And negative 12 it is. And then we're going to go ground and positive 12. Ugh! look at that. Close enough for government work. And now finally we'll check our plus five. And we've got five volts going there. All right. It has passed the LED test and it has passed the multimeter test. Now the question is, will it actually be able to power up a Eurorack module or not? I will be using my beloved Wogglebug as the uh, test specimen here. So hopefully nothing terrible will happen. Let's find out. I see blinking lights. Oh, look at that. Blinking lights. So we've got ourselves a device that can generate enough power to be able to, to feed a whole bunch of Eurorack modules. It was very simple to do, particularly if you put all the <laughs> pieces in correctly the first time. It was very inexpensive. I would say the whole thing cost me all of about 40 bucks, if that. And I'll be able to take it around and uh, be able to use it for testing and for you know small things like that. Um, the one thing I am going to do though is I'm going to put it into some sort of a, a plastic box so that I don't have to worry about the the solder pads underneath shorting each other out. Um, so uh, that's about it. So I'm really excited that I finally built the Frequency Central DIY power supply. It's really the last tool in the debugging kit that I need to be able to go and work on Eurorack modules away from my home studio. That's it for this episode of Under the Big Tree. As always, if you like what we're doing here, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For now, this is Nick, signing off.